Bom dia. Tudo bem? Oh, então, tudo bem? Está tudo bem? Oh, let me go back, because today is, well, it's a great day, isn't it? Oh, outside, we couldn't ask for better. And you, you know, I, yesterday I talked to St. Peter's and he, uh, he told me, don't worry, José, it's going to be a sunny day. Uh, so we, we all said, thank you so much for coming. Uh, you know, I'm so glad to see you around here. My name is uh, José Costa and uh, I teach Portuguese here at BCC. And I'm the, uh, the director of the, uh, the Portuguese center, we call it Luso Centro. Can you say it, please? And the word Luso uh, st stands for what? Luso. Portuguese, yes. Portuguese, anything related to Portuguese, the language, the culture, the history, and you know about all of these things. The thing is, I was going to, uh, you know, just to help you, uh, trying the Brazilian way, I always say bom dia. We, uh, they don't say bom dia, they say the j. And they go like this, bom dia. Say it, please. Oh, so beautiful. Say it again, please. Here we go. Bom dia. Yeah. Viva o Brasil! Ah, oh, muito bem. Very good. So, uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, and uh, I, you know, uh, we're going to, definitely, now you know that we're going to uh, learn a lot about this great, great country. Brazil, the history, uh, and the music of um, uh, the people that the people created, okay, uh, in this, this uh, uh, great, great country of the Lusophonia, which is, you know what is the Lusophonia, which is, you know, the, the countries where the Portuguese is the official language. Uh, I would like to, um, you know, definitely to take this opportunity to uh, recognize a few people here, um, because without them, the uh, you know this day would be uh, impossible. The Portuguese language day, this event, and definitely I would uh, like to uh, to thank the president of Bristol Community College, uh, Dr. Uh, Jacks Branger. I would like to thank also. Uh, Greg Sotheris, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Anthony Yucci, Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dean Joanne Preston, the Vision of Humanities and the Education, Steve Ozuk, Vice President of Students and Enrollment, and of course, my dear friend, Dr. Carlos Almeida, he is the Assistant Director of the, uh, the Luso Centro. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much. There are more people that we're going to recognize, you know, throughout the, um, you know, the time you are here, the event. But definitely, I would like to uh, once again thank you, uh, the students, and uh, definitely thank you, uh, the uh, the teachers uh, from all the the, uh, the schools that are here, because definitely without your presence, uh, we would not be able to celebrate, okay, uh, the language the Portuguese language in the world. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your help. <laughs> and now it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Joanne Preston, the Dean of the Vision for Humanities and Education, who has truly made this day possible. Professor Preston has been part of this day not only a, as an organizer, but also as a wonderful and committed supporter of Luso Centro. We truly wouldn't be here without her. Please welcome Professor Joanne Preston. Thank you, Dr. Costa. On behalf of the Division of Humanities in Education, we extend a warm welcome to all of you. This great event shows us how important is the study of humanities. Students, as yourself, that you know more than one language and a knowledge of more than one 
culture will enable you to be global citizens. As a global citizen, you will advance your careers and enrich your lives. Your teachers are your role models. They have shown you the importance of understanding the global world we live in. Thank you all for coming to BCC. Now it is my honor to introduce President Jack Sprager. Dr. S <laughs> Dr. Sprager has promoted and supported diversity and in international education through his tenure. We are very lucky to have a president who supports such a great event like this. Dr. Sprager. Thank you, Dean Preston, and welcome everyone. Welcome to Bristol Community College. We're very excited to host you and to have you here. I hope that you'll take advantage of being on a college campus and get a flavor of uh, what I hope is your future, that you'll be on the way to college uh, very shortly, right? And uh, you all have academic plans uh, uh, in, in your future, I trust, and this is, uh, this is the best way uh, to get involved uh, on a college campus, visit campuses that are perhaps nearer to your home. Uh, some of you have come from quite a ways and we welcome you. We're, we have a lovely day uh, weather-wise and we have a beautiful campus and uh, we're all celebrating your presence here. Uh, we've been waiting for you for quite a while now, uh, months of preparation for this day. Um, with regard to uh, international education in general and certainly Luso-centered uh, education in particular, uh, uh, we want to say how proud we are at Bristol Community College. We have our own Lusso Centro that you may know about. Uh, I hope you'll learn about it today, uh, which celebrates the Lusso community and uh, a, a global community. So we're uh, very happy that you're here. International uh, internationalism plays a, a key role in our curricula here at the college and also uh, the welcoming, accommodating environment that we seek to uh, maintain here at Bristol uh, deals with the welcoming of diversity and the uh, exchange of ideas from varying perspectives. That's what we're all about at a, at a college, and that's what uh, uh, we hope to transfer some of that spirit to you today, just in the short time that you're with us, relatively short time. So I thank you all for coming, and I wish you have a, a wonderful day. I know you'll have a wonderful day. And please keep Bristol Community College in your thoughts uh, in the future as well. You're always welcome. Thank you. I don't think so. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sprague. Um, and now it is my pleasure to introduce. By the way, how do you say to introduce in Portuguese? Uh uh. Introduce a person. How would you say? Come on. Uh, uh, uh. No, no. Portuguese, Portuguese. Oh, apresentar. Yeah, apresentar, não introduzir. Introduzir significa outra coisa. <laughs> See, they're laughing, eh? They know what I mean. <laughs> okay. You know a lot of Portuguese. Um, I would like to apresentar, introduce a great friend of mine. And we say that, well, these things, and I've, I've mentioned people here, uh, administrators, dean, that has, you know, they have been you know, very, very helpful. But, uh, you know, something. Without this person that I'm going to introduce, you know, I don't think we could do anything, okay, um, like this. So it is my pleasure to uh, introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Carlos Almeida, and he is the assistant director of Luso Centro. So please welcome Dr. Carlos Almeida. Bom dia. 
Thank you, my friend Jose Acosta. Uh, my role here is just to introduce to you a great friend and colleague of mine who's going to be the master of ceremonies for tonight, today's events. A Brazilian and Portuguese who resides in the, uh, the United States, Leila Valora is a doctoral candidate in organizational studies at Northeastern University and teaches in the Department of Communication here at BCC. Leila has over 10 years of experience in the field of communication in Brazil, Canada, Sweden, and the US. She has published academic articles in peer-reviewed journals such as Culture Unbound and books such as CO2, The Greening of a Region. She also co-founded the new media, film, and arts initiative, BridgeThink.org, which sponsors events that connect creative com communities and encourage cross-pollination between fields. Leila conducts research on intercultural relationships and is fascinated by the diversity of the world's cultures and how they relate to one another. This has led her to live in four different countries in addition to her home co uh, country of Brazil. She believes that traveling is the best way to learn about one's inner geography and true self. Please welcome Leila Valora. Bom dia. Okay, now you have a carioca accent here in your ears. Bom dia. Bom dia. Bom dia. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today celebrating such a beautiful language, Portuguese, and especially the Brazilian culture, the country that forms who I am, that is in my heart, a special country. And it's really a true pleasure to be here with you today sharing a little bit of that. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to call and welcome the Council of Portugal in New Bedford, Dr. Pedro Carneiro, to say a few words. Please welcome the Council of the Portugal. Bom dia. A lot of bom dia today, right? Good morning. Uh, it's a, a, a great, great pleasure to be here today. Uh, I was invited by, uh, by the Luso Centro, by BCC, to be here. I wasn't expecting this huge crowd. It's fantastic to have you know, all of you here um, celebrating the, the Portuguese language. Um, but first of all, let me just thank President Sbrega uh, of BCC, the Vice President, Dean Preston, uh, also for being here, uh, Professor José Costa and Carlos Almeida from Luso Centro, uh, Professor Dario Burin, who will actually uh, be the keynote speaker, um, and especially all the teachers of different high schools from different parts of this region, and especially all the students that are here, because this session uh, is, I think, I'm sure, especially dedicated, especially for you who are learning, learning the language. So it's a great pleasure to be here. I was, uh, I've been here to BCC before uh, sometimes, also to uh, uh, other high schools around the area. Perhaps some of you have uh, uh, already um, uh, uh, came across in uh, some events in the high schools. And it's great that we are holding this event today promoting the Portuguese language that you know is, is, is spoken in different parts of the world, in different continents, 250 million people uh, speak it uh, around the world, and many more are learning um, in, in, in de different parts. So it's a, a, a language that is uh, growing, as you know. And as I say every time I go to high schools and I meet you uh, and I meet students, it's uh, a language that it's growing, it has, um, it is part of countries that some of them 
have booming economies, so all of those that are learning the language um, will have an added value in their pocket, in their future careers, in their jobs. So it's, it's something that it's really an investment for the future. Um, and, uh, and I would like to uh, thank all the teachers, all the high schools, all the universities and colleges that are teaching the language because it's, uh, it's an investment for the future uh, um, and it's, it's, it's very good. So without further ado, thank you very much for the invitation and um, <laughs> Viva a Língua Portuguesa! Obrigado! It is my pleasure to recognize some members of the administration and some guests. President Dr. Isbrega, Vice President Greg Setheris, CAO, Chief Academic of Officer, Vice President Steve Ozeg, Vice President Elizabeth McCarthy, Assistant Vice President Anthony Ucci, Assistant Vice President Anna, Gaya, Anna Gayat, Mr. Fernando Garcia, Chef of BCC Board of Trustees, Dr. Odette Amarello, Member of Luso Center's Advisory Board, Mr. John Lima, Mr. Fernando Neto, and I would also like to introduce Dr. Anna Gayat, the new Assistant Vice President of Academic Affairs for the areas of languages and international education. Please welcome Dr. Anna Gayat. I'm going to be different. I'm going to say, buenos dias y bienvenidos a todos. <laughs> I'm from the other side of the border. I'm from Argentina originally. So when Jose asked me whether I wanted to be here today, I said, absolutely, I would love to celebrate the culture of our neighbors to the north. And I hit send. And then I go, he probably thinks that I've been hitting the Caipirinha early in the morning. You know what Caipirinha is, right? OK. Um, <laughs> because for me, Brazil is our neighbors to the north. Well, from the U.S. point of view, it's our neighbors to the south. So um, I think it was a little bit confusing. But be that as it may, I have been on the job a grand total of four days. So <laughs> it's a pleasure for me to be here. My first week at Bristol Community College in this particular event with so many people present, so interested in the culture of such a wonderful country as Brazil is. Brazil and my native Argentina both started in a very similar way as colonies from different crowns. In our case, it was Spain, Brazil, it was Portugal. We started very small, very slowly becoming our own entities, but then look at what Brazil is today. It's a huge power, technology, industry, manufacturing, agriculture, so much going on, you will hear some of that today. And that somehow is a metaphor for what we can be. So countries are important not just because they are the place of culture, the place of where people live, but also because they speak to us about what we can become. So listen to what's gonna, be said today about Brazil and take it as a metaphor for what your life can be. It would be very ins inspiring and it would be very interesting. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and, um, well, keep on studying Portuguese. As the consul said, it's a growing language. It's really good to have that multilingual thing to put in your resume. Don't drop it. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful day. Okay, and talking about learning Portuguese language, let's, let's all say one sentence in Portuguese, okay? Aprender português é legal. Do you understand what I'm saying? So learning Portuguese is cool. Legal is a word in Brazilian Portuguese that means cool. So aprender português é legal, again. 
Very good. Muito bem. Muito bom. Very good. Uh, I would also like to recognize some members of the media who helped this event uh, to happen today. Frank Batista from Radio, Vo Radio Voice do Imigrante, Henrique and Paula Arruda from WJFD FM, Radio Globo, Lourdes Silva, O Jornal, Francisco Rezende, Portuguese Times, and also some BCC, BCC staff member who are so important to make this event happen today. Laura Carlson, Director of Events Scheduling, Keith Thibault, Director of Television Services, Honorado da Costa, Audiovisual Equipment Technician, Sean Elliott, Stage and Sound Technician, Joanne Petrasso, Administrative Secretary of Division One, Wayne Wood, Chief of the BCC Campus Police, and the members of the BCC Portuguese Club. Thank you, all of you. And now it is my pla let's a round of applause. <laughs> And now it is with great pleasure that uh, I will introduce you to my colleague and friend uh, from Minas Gerais, Brazil, Professor Dario Borim. <laughs> professor Dario Borim is an associate uh, professor of Luso-Brazilian studies at UMass Dartmouth, and he's also a blogger, a concert producer, a creative writer, an internet radio show host programmer. He's also a photographer and a translator. His blog, Ponteio Cultural, features monthly essays on art, literature, music, and day-to-day -day deeds. Barim's Brazilians show on WMD 89.3 FM, which covers the music and culture of the Portuguese-speaking countries, has been on air for more than 12 years. Among Barim's books uh, in, in the English ver is the English version of the book by Elena Jobim, Antonio, uh, entitled Antonio Carlos Jobim, an, an Illuminated Man. His other writings, mostly on the interface of literature and music, have been included in distinguished volumes such as Music and Dictatorship in Europe and Latin America. Uh, and also in Bodies and Biases, Issues of Sexualities and Hispanic culture, Cultures. Other books and periodicals from Brazil, Belgium, England, France, Peru, Taiwan, and the United States have featured his works. His book, Crónicas Brasileiras, a reader, co-authored with Charles Petro Peroni and Celia Bianconi, will be released by the University Press of Florida on June 4th, 2014. Please welcome our guest speaker with a round of applause. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. I must confess I'm a little shy, so <laughs> in front of all these people, well, <laughs> Not really. <laughs> thank you very much for coming, and thank you, BBC folks, for this honorable invitation. I uh, hope that we have fun. It's mandatory here <laughs> to learn and to have fun. I hope uh, that's the case. Uh, this is an amazing apparatus, an amazing initiative, and um, it's because of you, it's because of your presence here and your contribution to uh, a day in any country of the Portuguese speaking world. Music there makes the language be what it is and be much more due to the symbiosis, to the contribution that poetry and melody uh, can give each other. Right. I, uh, my topic here today is um, a bit uh, ambitious. It's, um, I'm, I'm planning to, I'm, I'm trying to cover 80, approximately 80 years of 
uh, music, um, traveling north, you know, from Brazil straight up to North America. And in order to do so, in order to illustrate such waves or such, you know, movement, I'm sure that you all know how art in the larger sense knows no boundaries, right? No country limits, absolutely. It has never, ever respected borders. Music needs no passports, right? To uh, travel and influence the art, the music, um, all artistic expressions of different countries, right? And so music is definitely the case and music is a universal language by itself. And uh, music in Portuguese helps people understand the Portuguese, appreciate it, actually love it, learn it, and practice it. I have a few friends who claim to have learned Portuguese through music. And I'm sure all of you enjoy music. That's one of those things, it seems that everybody does, right? If there's a person on earth who does not like music, I definitely would like to know this person. It might be, that person might be made of a different thing, right? a different kind of raw material, right? But I've never met one, right? So thank you so much for coming. And, and thank you, Leila. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to be here. Let's get going. I will, um, let me just get a slide here and um, mention how we will proceed. Okay. I think it can speak, yeah, you can hear me, fine. Anyway. Um, my platform is that which includes, I believe, eight waves of uh, cultural uh, transference or the arrival of Brazilian music to the United States. And I'm going to talk very briefly about each of them now, okay, the first step. And the second step of this presentation will include probably pieces of four or five clips, depending on how well we do with time. We will not see, we will not see all the, all, all the clips, the, the clips entirely. I, um, just because of time. But uh, anyway, we'll have a sampling of, of those uh, clips so that you appreciate a little bit the visual and sound nature of what I'll be talking about here today. We're going to start with Carmen Miranda, right? Uh, do you all know Carmen Miranda? Who knows Carmen? Who has heard of Carmen Miranda? Some, right? Okay, that's okay. That's all right. Just to give you an idea of how important she was in some terms, you know, in this country, it, it probably suffices to say that she was the best paid woman in the United States of America. So you know how loud, how loudly uh, money speaks, right? So that says something about her, right? So she was a Hollywood star, a singer, born in Portugal, raised in Brazil uh, by her Portuguese parents, and she became a moderately famous singer in Brazil before coming to the U.S. in 1939. And very soon, she became a huge star in this country. Her story is fascinating. I do not have time to go over much of it, but I do invite you to seek one documentary that is fabulous about her life and legacy. It's called Bananas is My Business, okay? Not very difficult to remember, right? Bananas is my business. Fabulous. 
One piece of caution, though, you might, you may cry. It's amazingly touching and amazingly well done. Before I just move on, I just want to give you an idea in case I, you know, this is very important. She brought Samba to the United States. Samba had basically never come here, had never been appreciated, and she was made a, a mega star, a superstar in Hollywood. And by singing samba and promoting, as, promoting samba as a symbol of Brazil, of a, of a national identity, part of Brazil, a very small part of the elite, they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all, okay? Because samba was associated with the outskirts of town, with the poor sexes of town, with the poor people of Brazil. And there was some racism attached to it too, since samba was mostly developed by African Brazilians and the racist part of the elite especially in Rio, did not like that. And that was quite a blow to her. It was, she suffered enormously by what happened one night at a casino. Uh, casinos are big in some parts of this country, but in the 1930s in Brazil, casinos were like a laboratory of music experimentation. Music from a, around the world, artists from all parts of the world performed in the different casinos. So after having become a star in the United States, as I said, the best paid woman in the United States, she performed in Brazil, she sang a song, nobody clapped their hands. She sang a second song, nobody clapped their hands. I believe after the third, she collapsed on stage. She didn't die, but she never recovered from that reaction of the elite of Brazil. I, I, I re re reiterate that just a very small part of Brazil, right? In Rio, in particular, right? But so that's Carmen Miranda, and we're going to see a clip uh, that shows how she was extremely talented, but her image, Im an image created and perpetrated in Hollywood, was problematic too, because she was portrayed as this sexy Latin American woman with bananas in her heads and other in her head and other fruits and always 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 that stereotypical notion of a sensuous Latin American woman and that was problematic in a lot of parts of Brazil especially when she played dumb characters and over and over again dumb characters and she was extremely intelligent and extremely talented and wanted to do serious characters interpret serious characters in Hollywood, and they, they would not allow it because they wanted to freeze that successful image that had been created, right? Uh, I mentioned here Walt Disney's Donald Duck and uh, Joe Carioca. Joe, Walt Disney w went to Brazil and was inspired to create that character, Joe Carioca, which is a, car uh, a pair that smokes cigars and is a street wise. And, the movies, these two movies that I mentioned, The Three Caballeros and Saludos Amigos, uh, helped popularize samba in the United States and throughout the world. You must remember that in, uh, in the 40s, in the early 40s, the, Europe was torn apart, you know, by war, right? So Brazil and the rest of Latin America meant business for Americans in particular, in general, and for Hollywood in particular, because they had to sell their movies. So they had to be pleasing and generous and kind to their neighbors south of here. And so there was this uh, uh, ideological uh, uh, partnership between, let's say, Washington and Hollywood. And part of the result was the making of these movies, which at attempted to show how Americans were kind to Latin Americans and how Latin Americans, Latin Americans were inviting to North Americans and how uh, then the problematic part, you know, you, Brazil was a country where, you know, you, you could have a lot of fun uh, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that except that the portrayal of women in those movies are, are really debatable. There are uh, lots of works 
done in, in that kind of uh, image. But we don't have time to get much into that. Uh, you just have a glimpse of, of that problematic side to, of what happened in uh, the late 30s and throughout the 40s. Laurindo de Almeida was the next uh, wave that I point out, just an, an iconic image of a man who came from uh, a small town in Sao Paulo, and he was a genius, a self-taught musician who interpreted classical uh, composers to the beat of samba, uh, enchanting Southern California, enchanting the rest of the United States uh, to the point that he won five Grammys when Grammys really meant a lot, because the very few Grammys, very few categories were uh, uh, defined and, and rewarded at that time. And imagine a Brazilian from a small countryside town won a Grammy in jazz in the United States. That's no small achievement, beating Miles Davis, Harry Mancini, and everybody else. A Brazilian winning a Grammy in jazz in the United States. That gives an idea of the talent of that man who was self-taught self musician. He developed a lot of uh, manuals for learning how to play the guitar, too, and he's world famous for that, right? He wrote scores for more than 800 movies in Hollywood. You might have heard of Bonanza. You probably have heard of Godfather, right? So these are movies that feature his mu music. Laurindo Almeida, right? And then jazz stars were invited to go to Brazil in the early 60s. Again, another political issue, um, Cold War. So the State Department was involved in sending a Charlie Bird and uh, other jazz stars in, to Brazil, and they brought suitcases filled with uh, vinyls, uh, and then Bossa Nova got going here in the US with uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, João Gilberto, and many others. Uh, by 1964, something happened here. Uh, a, a group from Europe came over to play here. Do you guys remember who that was? What band was that, 1964? The Beatles. The Beatles, exactly. The Beatles came with a splash, and in a way, they made the Bossa Nova craze in this country wane because it was really a craze. You could not release a jazz album in the United States at that point, let's say between 62 and 64, without the word Bossa Nova. It would not sell. <laughs> you know, so that concept was huge here. Uh, and Garota de Ipanema, the girl from Ipanema, sold three million copies in about a year, you know, a couple of years. It's just something phenomenal. And another phenomenon uh, came, which was the Beatles, right? Cutting short a little bit of that craze with Bossa Nova. But that continued. You cannot find a jazz master who has not recorded a song written by Antonio Carlos Jobim. Definitely, they all claim, so no, at least one I have recorded because uh, the music of Jobim is amazingly appealing to jazz aficionados, to jazz practitioners, to people who enjoy uh, instrumental music worldwide. The Japanese, for example, are absolutely crazy about bossa nova. Uh, João Gilberto was once um, applauded you may think that, Dario, you're crazy. You know, maybe you got the wrong information. But he was applauded for 42 minutes. João Gilberto in Japan, in, you know, in Tokyo. So that, it's crazy. I mean, it's like, wow. I mean, it's irrational, right? But that's, that's how uh, music sometimes makes people feel about it. People are obsessed with music in, in so many ways. Can be, right, potentially. Sergio Mendes was, and you're going to see a little bit of Sergio Mendes, was somebody who uh, helped sustain a certain craze for Bossa Nova and enhanced the appreciation of samba and enhanced the appreciation of other rhythms from Brazil, including some from the Northeast, like the Bayão, Chachado, which you're going to listen to on stage here, live performance with Valdiza Moraes, who'll be here uh, performing after, later on 
on this program, this marvelous program put, put together by BCC. Ayrton Moreira, Flora Purina, Navas Concelos, Brazilianized in the 1970s, hot jazz fusion scene. Fusion is key word in jazz today. It's been since the 70s, and Brazilian drummers, Brazilian um, uh, uh, percussionists had much to do with that. And then David Byrne released a, an album called the Beleza Tropical, two volumes in 1989, and suddenly I, I was living here in the US at that point. I was living in, in uh, Minneapolis, in Minnesota, and I went to the movies, and before the movies started, I would be listening to Brazilian music. I thought, wow, wow what, what's this? Is this the US? You know, because it was catching fire. David Byrne was very popular, is very popular, and the music he selected for these two albums, Beleza, Tropical, are fantastic. You have a taste of the power of Brazilian music through those albums. And he has released other collections after that. Uh, but that had a tremendous impact. You guys must have seen a movie called Dirty Dancing. Yes, right, so that has lambada flavor. That was another craze of Brazilian music here in the US, and that's uh, 89, 91. Uh, fun type of dancing, sensuous, a little racy, right, but definitely something that made the world go nuts. One song sold seven million copies, one lambada song, you know, and that's huge. Um, I will step back just a second just to say how uh, the Beatles and Bossa Nova compare and contrast for a second. Uh, the Beatles won seven platinum discs, okay? And they were four people, right? Seven platinum discs. Antonio Carlos Jobim, one guy from Rio, he won four. You know, so he, he would say, well, you know, I, I, I'm not doing too badly against the Beatles, and you can, you can imagine. You know, that's not a small achievement, right? Now, um, then we have here, 30 years past their heyday, Tropicalia and the band Os Mutantes are discovered in the U.S. in 1999. John Perellas, uh, a New York Times uh, music editor, was one of the people who discovered uh, the Tropicalistas, who had been... Uh, making a history change in Brazil in uh, the late 1960s. And what they did, they did many things, but they questioned art in different directions from different angles. They employed sophisticated art philosophy to their music, and that includes Dadaism, you know, and also the notion that all sounds, all sounds, absolutely all sounds, can be manipulated, can be transformed into music. So that was huge, that was one thing. And the other thing too, is that music was made richer by combining languages, musical languages from around the world. There should be no prejudice against, for example, using the electric guitar in a folk song. You may have heard, you probably know, Bob Dylan, right? Not too far from here, absolutely not far from here, in Newport, 1963. He was booed, you know, because he played the guitar to uh, a tune of folk music. It was like shocking, but that was a, a, a precursor of what, let's say, the tropicalists were doing in Brazil, the freedom to experiment, the freedom of using, let's say, a sitar from India in a rock song. You know, what's wrong with that, right? So that notion that you could use instruments and phrases, musical phrases from all, anywhere in the world into any style of music, right? So then world music, as you guys know, as in this country we call it world music, world music changed. And it changed a lot because of the tropicalists in Brazil who were spreading out these notions beautifully because they were great artists, very creative poets and musicians, daring artists to shake up the status quo, you know. And of course, they were booed, they were not accepted by a lot of people, especially the left. They, they, they were not liked by the left or the right, you know, the right because they were too conservative to appreciate that kind of innovation. And by the left, 
because they were not strictly political, you know? They did not talk about revolutions in the armed sense or in the sense of implementing socialism in Brazil. You know, not necessarily. They were revolutionary in aesthetic terms and even in political terms too. But the left failed, failed to see. Leftist students like you, your age, or just a little older, they had a hard time with the tropicalistas. So I guess we have a few minutes. I, I would welcome a, a couple of questions. Um, thank you so much for being here. Any questions anywhere? Yes? You can probably hear everybody? I don't know. Questions? Yeah. Please stand up. What you were learning? No, I cannot hear. Yeah, well, it's this, the nature of, of music, how it can travel from one continent to another and enrich. Because as you could see, the end was David Byrne and Marisa Mont just showcasing the blend of two cultures, two languages, and let's say two countries with a lot of similarities that sometimes people, sometimes people don't see. But Brazil and the United States are two countries that illustrate how they have similar cultures, similar histories, and yet a lot of difference to contribute to something better that combines the elements from both cultures, musically and otherwise. So I hope you, you bring home that notion that uh, music is very powerful and you should take it seriously with our hearts open for experimentation, for acceptance of different, foreign, unusual trends, because they make, make us all richer. And I think uh, Brazilian music, like the music of the United States of America, you know, these two countries have given the world a wealth the richness of music that is hard to compare, you know. Um, so thank you very much for your question. Before, before you go home, and of course there's great concert coming up, but just a reminder, in our part of the world, in this part of the United States, we are blessed in so many ways, and one of them, okay, I'm a photographer, I love nature here, if you have not had the chance to explore the, the reserves that are spread out, you know, like in Dartmouth alone, there are 35 wonderful places where you can photograph creeks, animal life, the sea, rivers, lakes, and so forth. So that's a fantastic thing. The other thing is the presence of the Portuguese culture here, expressed through Brazil, Cape Verde, and Portugal mostly. And this is really special for us and we should take, uh, we should enjoy it and enjoy it musically too. Therefore, you know, a reminder, uh, I, uh, WJFD out of New Bedford, right, has now Sueli de Barra with a program called Brazil Noir, Brazil on Air, and it airs Saturday, 7 to 10 a.m., so you can listen to great music on your uh, radio, in your car, right, as you drive around, as you enjoy cooking, watching, whatever, right, so that's Saturday, 7 to 10 a.m., and then Tuesdays and Thursday nights from 9 to 10 p.m., you know, again, Tuesdays and Thursdays, seven, uh, 9 to 10 p.m., great Brazilian music, and I do myself my radio show, which is also on the internet, right, live. Thursdays today, so after this event, I'll be running to the studio and doing a show. I'll have an interview with a great musician, 
that I recorded just a few days ago. I'll be playing two new releases, and the thing just catches fire on a weekly basis on Brazilians. And that's a radio show that I've been doing for 12 and a half years, and it's just delightful for me to share that wealth with you. I have listeners here. Lisa Godinho is one of them. I have listeners throughout Latin America, Europe, different parts of the United States, and I'm not boasting, bragging or anything, I'm just saying, sharing with you guys, I'm so happy and I feel when I'm on air spreading the music of Brazil, Portugal, Cape Verde, Mozambique, Angola, Guinea, everywhere, it's just for me, those are the best hours of my week, do you understand? So if you can catch that, and if you can feel that for the music of our cultures, you know, I think you're getting a lot out of it. Thank you so much. Obrigada, Dario, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, I would like to recognize our sponsors who also make this event possible. This program is sponsored in part by the Portugalia Imports, Professor John Carasimo, Director of BCC Culinary Arts Program, BCC Portuguese Club, BCC Multicultural Committee, BCC Multicultural Student Center, and the BCC Division of Humanities and Education. At this time, let's take a 10-minute break and come back to enjoy some good Brazilian music, to dance, sing on this fusion that Dario Barim just talked about. Let's have a break. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I'd like to first ask for uh, the owner of a car in the parking lot, please the owner of the Toyota Camry, a green Toyota Camry, license Rhode Island uh, JL23 Toyota Camry license Rhode Island uh, JL23 please uh, go to the brick area there is something a problem with your car so please go to the brick area and it is my pleasure uh, to recognize the presence of a very special guest in our audience today Mr. John Lima, uh, who has instituted a scholarship at BCC, especially for BCC students who uh, are taking Portuguese courses. And I would like to ask you a round of applause for Mr. John Lima. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And now it is my pleasure, it's that moment that you all feel very excited about, that I will recognize, when I will recognize each school here today. Let's see who, is, uh, who has more students here today, which school has more students here today. Okay, first school. Let me ask you, is Espírito Santo School here today? Good. I would like to thank Principal Heidi Kuliga, Senhora Elizabeth Pereira, Senhora Roberta Schneller, Senhora uh, Haig, Haig. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, is School Collie Cassidy High School here? Thank you to Jennifer Dematos, Cherry Gilmore. Thank you. And how about Dartmouth High School? Thank you. Jane Carrero, Deborah Diaz Faria, Cecilia Figueredo, Hilaria, and Hilaria Souza. Thank you. Let me ask this, is Dime, Dime, uh, Dayton Rehoboth High School here? Good, thank you, Victor Augusto, Mary Alice Diaguiar, thank you. 
And where is Durfee High School? <laughs> Thank you, Tony Rodriguez, Lisa Almeida, and Sandra Rodriguez. Where is Ludo High School? Ludlow High School. Thank you, Maria Fernandez, Cindy Grudro, Angela Lewis. Thank you. New Bedford High School. <laughs> Thank you to Dulce Correa, Celia dos Santos, and Sonia Pires. Thank you. Where is Somerset Berkeley High School? Thank you to Rita Pimenta, Carmen Francisco, and Lisa Ponte from Somerset Berkeley High School. And where is Taunton High School? Thank you to Mary Lou Freitas, Tanya da Silva, Lisa uh, McNick, McNick, Claudina Nunes, and Sandra Oliveira Silva. And last but not least, Westport High School. Thank you to Edneuza Farias and Caroline Pavon. A round of applause to all these wonderful schools. And now, so that we can sing and dance a little bit on the fusion that Professor Dario Borin talked about, the beautiful fusion of Brazilian music. Uh, I would like to introduce you to our Brazilian band who will be, who will be playing here for us to, to this morning. Uh, but first, I would like to share some uh, thoughts by Yo-Yo Ma. Do you know Yo-Yo Ma, the American musician? A great American musician who recorded a CD called Obrigado Brasil with Brazilian music. And he said that uh, in his CD, Obrigado Brasil, he says, Brazil is a land defined by its eclecticism. For in no other place on earth do the sounds of African, European, and American people come together to make a music so distinct and timeless. So we'll see a little bit of this fusion tonight, this eclecticism. And now it's my pleasure to, this morning to introduce the Val Moraes Quartet. The vocalist Val Moraes is a dynamic performer with a gorgeous voice and effortless stage presence who embodies the most elusive and enchanting aspects of Brazilian music a sort of relaxed intensity that has long attracted music lovers from all over the world. Moraes will show today an interesting repertoire which includes music from several regions of Brazil, such as the Amazonian North, Carimbó, the music of her native northeastern Brazil, Baião and Frevo, the southeast Samba, and music from the country of Cape Verde as well. She is backed by a talented band comprised of guitar player Luis Silva, bass player Jose Pianasola, and drummer Sidney Amaro. Please welcome the Valmorais Quartet. Good morning. Good morning. Bom dia para todos. So, I would like to thank. Uh, Carlos Almeida and Dario Burin, you know, to invite us to be here tonight. It's such an honor to be here. So tonight we're going to show you a little taste of different areas in Brazil. Uh, northeast, you know, north, southeast. So just a little bit different, just to give you a taste of everything. And uh, the other thing is, uh, as you know, Brazil has a lot of problems, right? A lot of difficulties. But there is one thing that you really know how to do is express themselves through the dance. So it brings a lot of joy. So it's, uh, I hope you can feel this joy, to give you what the Brazil has the best, the, the movement and the music. So lose yourself to dance.
This is from North East. So the next song called Ai Menina is from North, called the rhythm called Carimbo. It's kind of a similar, but there is something different. Ok. 
que fazer com teu rebolado? Ai, ai, menino, o que fazer com essa saia rodada? Ai, ai, se o tambor começa, tua saia gira o mundo inteiro Para, para ver, menina, menino, o que fazer com teu rebolado? Ai, ai, menino, o que fazer com essa saia rodada? Ai, ai, se o tambor começa, tua saia gira o mundo inteiro Para, para ver, menina, ai, menina, vem pra roda Segue a ginga do teu rodar Ai, menina, vem Pra roda, vem Ai, menina Aqui tem carimbó Todo mundo balança no teu balado Curimbó, segue a ginga do teu rodado Com teu rebolado, ai ai, menino, o que fazer com essa saia rodada? Ai ai, se o tambor começa, a tua saia gira o mundo inteiro. Para, para ver, menina, menino, o que fazer com teu rebolado? Ai ai, menino, o que fazer com essa saia rodada? Ai ai, se o tambor começa, a tua saia gira o mundo inteiro. Para, para ver, menina, ai menina. Segue a ginga do teu rodar Ai, menina Pra roda vem Ai, menina Aqui tem carimbó Todo mundo balança no teu bailado Curimbó, segue a ginga do teu rodar next song will be a frevo. And this is not a, just a rhythm, but it's also um, dance. There is a specific way we can dance. I can show you a little bit uh, how to dance. If you want, please, whatever, and dance, be crazy, and move. The next song is just uh, frevo. 
Me segura se não eu caio. Subindo a poeira, fazendo calor Nos quatro cantos cheguei E todo mundo chegou Descendo a ladeira, descendo a poeira Fazendo calor E na mistura colorida da massa Fui fazer na praça A todo vapor E descambei, passando pelos bares Cheirei a menina E voei pelos ares No pique do frevo Caí como um raio Me segura senão eu caio Me segura senão eu caio me segura senão eu caio, me segura senão eu caio Nos quatro cantos cheguei e todo mundo chegou Descendo a ladeira, subindo a poeira, sentindo o calor nos quatro cantos cheguei e todo mundo chegou Descendo a ladeira, subindo a poeira, sentindo calor e Na mistura colorida da massa Fui fazer na praça a todo vapor E escampei passando pelos bares Cheirei a menina e voei pelos ares No pique do frevo caí como um raio Me segura se não é caro, me segura se não é caro Me segura se não é caro, me segura se não é caro Ei! The next song called Só um Cartinha. It's a Cape Verdean song. Who is from Cape Verde here? I love you know, Cape Verdean music and I always include in my repertoire. I think it's important to you know, have a you know, variety of different sound and people usually that doesn't really include, but I think it's very important, it's beautiful. And I would like to show you Só um Cartinha, just one letter. Trazemos 
cartinha Com a cabeça na bomba Trazem só um cartinha Uma duas regrinha Trazem só um cartinha Com a cabeça na bomba Trazem só um cartinha Uma duas regrinha Mas naquele cartinha Trazem uma peça Naquele cartinha Naquele cartinha trazer minha cretinha, naquele cartinha trazer tudo que é o mar azul. Trazem só um cartinha pra cabeça na bomba, trazem só um cartinha, uma boja grinha, trazem só um cartinha. Dois regrinha, mas naquele cartinha trazer mora beça, naquele cartinha trazer um serenata, naquele cartinha trazer minha cretel, mas naquele cartinha trazer tudo que é o mar azul, trazer só um cartinha. Trazem só um cartinha Trazem só um cartinha Trazem só um cartinha Mas naquele cartinha Trazem uma peça Mas naquele cartinha Trazem um serenata Naquele cartinha Naquele cartinha trazer tudo que é o mar azul.
Deixa isso pra lá 
gosto de amor é assim Beijinho com beijinho pra cá Carinho com carinho pra lá Vem balançar Amor é balanceiro, meu bem Só vale no balanço quem tem Carinho para dar Can I play Siranda? It's a different rhythm.
Thank you. Sorry, I have a little problem with the sound, but I think we'll be fine. We're gonna play E Doshun is Afoche, and this rhythm is from Bahia, usually you know, born there actually. So hope you can feel the difference between one country or oh, one city, another city. Afoche called E Doshun.
Nessa cidade todo mundo é do chão Homem, menino, menina, mulher Toda cidade radia magia Presente na água doce Presente na água salgada E toda cidade brilha Presente na água doce Presente na água salgada E toda cidade brilha Seja tenente ou filho de pescador O importante desembargador Se der presente é tudo uma coisa Força que mora na água não faz distinção de cor e toda a cidade é do chum. E a força que mora na água não faz distinção de cor e toda a cidade é do chum.
with me. Thank you. Luis Silva, guitar. José Pianazola, bass. Sidney Amaro, drums. It's a really pleasure to be here. And thank you very much for listening to us and dance. It was wonderful. So we're gonna play samba. Então me ilumina, me diz como é que 
So we're gonna play our last song. I really hope you enjoy the show. We actually enjoy a lot. So thank you again for listening to us, for dance. Such a pleasure. Please keep dancing. Keep in, lose yourself to dance. Sentindo dor 